Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we will be creating this effect, the one that you will see in front of you, flickering screens. Now, I got the idea while I was working on a scene uh, from a movie or a short film to be specific, and it will be released hopefully by next year or end of this year. And one of the challenges that I faced while creating this short film is the flickering effect for more dramatic, of course, and realistic use. And I searched online, couldn't find many resources, so I decided to create my own. This is my own implementation. I'll walk through it and hopefully you can recreate it, understand it and apply it on your own projects. Now that we are done modeling, let's start by applying the mirror modifiers so we can apply the textures on the face of the material. But before we start doing that, let's have a copy of the object and then M to put it in a new collection. New collection, let's call that trash. So we can have a backup of our object before applying the modifiers because once we apply them, we can never go back from that state. Now let's start by applying the mirror modifier, the first one, and then let's apply the second mirror modifier. Let's keep the subdivision modifier because we do not need to apply that right now. We will apply it before the final render. Now that we have applied the mirror modifiers, let's select the faces we want to extrude. But first of all, let's remove the unnecessary edge loops. So we do not need this edge loop. I'm gonna put X and dissolve edges. I also don't want this edge loop since it's literally unnecessary. So I'm going to put X and dissolve edges. Okay, now we are left with a screen, a case of this screen and no extra loop cuts or edge loops. After that, let's create materials. Let's start by, by the general material for the case and the monitor itself. We go to the material panel and create a new material. Let's call it case and then let's make this black at the moment. And if we go to the shading property over here, we can see that this material is fully black. We can add a bit of sheen to it and maybe reduce the specularity a bit. Add isotropic because, an isotropic I mean, because my screen is isotropic. And finally add some sheen to it. Why not? Now it looks okay, like the case of screen or maybe phone, tablet. But anyways, now we have to add another material for the screen itself, for, th for the animation itself, for the flickering animation itself. So we are in the animation panel. Let's create a new panel over here, a new tab. And in this tab, we will create a new material. Let's call it the screen material. Now, if we do anything here to this material, we will not see any effect over here because we have not applied this material to specific faces. By, because by default, the first material is applied to the whole object. And if you want to apply extra materials to, uh, to specific faces, we need to specify that explicitly. So let's choose the faces that we want this material to cover from top to bottom, left to right. Let's make sure that these are the selected faces by reducing the subdivisions. And yeah, this seems wrong. So. Now this seems quite right. Now let's go to the material panel again and then choose the material that we want to specify for this face or multiple faces. And then let's have a, let's click on assign. As you can see, we have now the shape of a case and the shape of the screen material. We can create some more emission over here, maybe give it a white emission. And if we go over here, we can see that it is clearly emitting some white light and this one is just the case. Since now we have created the materials themselves, we need to edit them. And to do that, we have to go to the shading layout and in this layout, we will be editing the nodes of the materials. Let's go to the material panel, make sure that we are selecting the screen monitor, the screen material because the the material that we select is the one that we will be editing down here. You can also select from here and then make sure that we reduce the emission to black because we will be manipulating it later. And now let's start by testing the flickering shape at least on the base color. Now we need to define the rectangular shape of the flickering effect. However, Blender really does not support gradient rectangles. Therefore, we need to be a bit tricky about it and implement it in another way. First of all, let's start by adding a gradient texture. Sorry, wrong keyboard. 
adding a gradient texture to the base color and then changing the gradient texture to be a spherical gradient texture. After we've done that, we need a way to manipulate the sphere you, that you see on the screen. And we can do that simply by adding a texture coordinate to the gradient texture. We can do that simply by, create, by pressing Ctrl T on the gradient texture to nozzle shop, the gradient texture coordinate system, we make it an object space, and the mapping of the texture coordinates. If the Ctrl T shortcut doesn't work on your Blender, then make sure that you are on preferences and the no Drangler add-on is enabled in your add-ons. So as you can see in the mapping node over here, we can manipulate the shape of the circle. We can transform it. We can scale it, scale it up, scale it down. For example, the Y scale over here will represent the width of, this, uh, of the circle. The larger the scale is, the smaller the width is. So we go large the circle becomes thin. For, for this application, we need to make the scale of the y-axis or the width zero. Thus, this will make it expand to infinity. And the z can be changed, of course. We can, we can increase it to make it smaller. And then we can just manipulate the z-axis of the location to move it up and down. So now that we have the shape of the flicker, let's start animating it. First of all, let's notice the range of the movement. The vertical movement. We can extend it to four, I see, four meters will be okay to hide it from screen, the bottom, and negative four will be okay to hide it at the top. So basically we have a range from negative four to four. The only fluctuating values or the fluctuating nodes in Blender are the trigonometric nodes, the sine, cosine, and whatsoever. So we can achieve this same result with sine and cosine multiplied by four, and then it will fluctuate between negative four and four. The Blender shading nodes or shading editor supports the sine and cosine, the trigonometry nodes on the math node. So if we go here, search for math, and then we can choose which geometry, trigonometric function we can use. I'm going, I'm, I'll be happy with sine and let it value be equal to the frame. And let's combine it with X and Y and Z because we want it wanted to be able to manipulate the Z axis. And then let's put the vector, this vector as a location and let's hit spacebar. And let's see the animation. Now the animation is a bit slow, so let's scale it up. We can multiply the value of the sign with, with let's say five. As you can see, the animation looks very good. We can multiply it by four to make it precisely equal to the range that we defined earlier between negative four and four and hit spacebar. It's looking extremely, extremely good. Now you can decrease the speed over here, like multiply the frame by something if you want to decrease the speed or increase the speed of the fluctuation. However, I am very happy with the result. Now that we are done with the animation of the flickering effect, Let's move these nodes down here responsible for the flickering effect and let's put them in the anime, uh, in the emission strength. Now let's create a base color for the screen. Let's say we're watching a movie and this mov movie will have this background. Wait, I'm still creating the background. Let's give it color ramp. And then instead of the white boring color, let's give it green, for example. And then of course, assign the color to the base color. Now we have this background. If we hit space power, nothing will happen, of course, because the emission is set to black. Now, if we set the emission to white, as you can see, it's really, really contrasting to the background, which is the greenish, blackish color. So the best option is to take the output of the color ramp of the poison noise or the noise texture and put it in the emission. So we have, or we get as an output, some vibrant color of the same color as the background color or what's happening on the screen. So if we have space bar, now we see a perfect flickering effect happening on the screen. You can decide speed, of course, from here, you can decide the scale from here and so on and so forth. With this, we are done with the screen effect and that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Have fun. Goodbye.